So a few weeks ago, a guy named George emailed me asking if I wanted to come to Park City, Utah and test out the world's fastest production drone. I was a little skeptical at first, but later that night I was actually watching a TV show called BattleBots. And on BattleBots, the first contestant, guess who it was? It was George. I was, it just totally blew my mind. And at that point, I was like, yes, I'm totally in. I'm coming to Utah. I want to fly the fastest production drone. And that's exactly what I did. So let's not waste any time. Let's jump right in and look at the drone. First off, the name of the drone is called Teal. Originally, he built this kind of under uh, the name iDrone because uh, his appreciation with Apple products uh, but the real name of the drone is the teal now a little bit about George is that he started doing this when he was 11 years old he's only 18 now and just graduated uh, high school just uh, a few weeks back but he's been doing this since he's 11 he's been flying them he's been building them and he started to make a list of every feature he would ever want uh, in his dream drone well, eventually, as time passed, he built that drone. And this is it, the teal. So not only does the teal do 70 miles per hour plus and have a built-in camera capable of recording 4K at 24 frames per second, but this thing also has a built-in supercomputer. But let's just have George tell you about that real quick. So these are three teals uh, with different configurations. This is sort of the standard package that comes out of the box, uh, gets the user flying and has a 4K camera integrated, fully electronically stabilized, the supercomputer built in, and then it's fully upgradable with, with these configurations, for example. So we've got the prop guards, the FPV cover. Uh, the idea behind this was to make it as expandable as possible so that users can tune it to their flight style or, or the use case that they want to fly it for. So instead of just being a flying camera, we can also play games with it, we can race with it, you can toss it up in the air, have it follow you around, and then developers can actually start to build apps around this, and we can build an app store of use cases and, and uh, uh, you know, see what's possible in this space. Like I mentioned, on the hardware side, it's fully modular, the arms plug in and out, the battery snaps in on the bottom, the top cover also comes off really easily, so you can switch it out with uh, different kinds that, that let you mount FPV equipment, prop guards, uh, any sort of equipment, and then on the inside we have the the necessary connections and peripherals to be able to connect different types of sensors and modules and, and then program it to do what you want. So out of the box we have the, the camera. Obviously that gives us uh, 4K video, 13 megapixel stills gives us image recognition capability. We have that supercomputer integrated and then the inertia navigation system, which has a GPS receiver, magnetometer, barometer, gyro, and accelerometer. It combines all the data coming in from those sensors and uh, channels it through one stream. So it gives you a lot better flight accuracy and estimations. Also gives us differential and RTK GPS capability. So we can get up to about, uh, or get to about a couple centimeter accuracy with GPS instead of, you know, big six foot range. Um, and then expandable sensors can be thermal imaging, optical avoidance systems, anything that, that you know, can run basically over USB or I2C, URI to SPI, uh, anything that, that uh, you know, a computer can run. So let me give you an example of one of these apps that George explained to me. Uh, basically he said that you could go to a field and set up a flying course uh, in virtual reality so you'll basically be at the flying field but through the computer you can make gates and flags and obstacle courses and then you and your friends can race through those obstacle courses in real time it just totally blew my mind it's so out of the box you know we'll be launching with three of our own applications uh, our company will be the first is a command and control that, that lets users start flying it has waypoint navigation geofencing all the basics to, to start flying and and see what's capable with this, this platform. It has a, a beginner mode where users can hit take off. The, the quadcopter will go up about 20 feet, generate a virtual bubble around itself so that uh, you can learn your controls and orientation without it flying away and crashing. Um, and once you get good enough, you can just disable that and start flying like normal. And then the second app that we're working on is follow me mode, where users toss this up in the air, have it follow them around based on image recognition that's done real time on the super, super computer. Um, and so that gives just rock solid performance, whether it's following you or your bike or a car. And then the third app that we're building is a racing and gaming mode where you, users can log their flights and telemetry, be able to compete against other people virtually online, 
and also augment, also integrate some augmented reality where you can actually fly through obstacles and, and feel like you're going through a race course even though you're just in a parking lot or a field. Um, and then we'll be you know, offering those SDKs like I mentioned, start building out other apps for the platform that just work through your smartphone. Um, we've, been, we've already been going to hackathons and different events, seeing what, what you know, developers are interested in doing with this. And they, they go all the way from you know, mind control with EEG headsets to analy analyzing their baseball bat swing to playing hide and seek. You know, anything that you can imagine is, is programmable with this. Um, and then you know, even though we're gearing this towards the consumer market, uh, for consumers, hobbyists, racers, and developers, we also want to start you know, exploring the commercial market and seeing what's possible with search and rescue, agriculture monitoring. With uh, the machine learning capability, with the supercomputer, we're actually you know, able to do things like with search and rescue, you can send out a swarm of these, have it identify a person, learn what a person looks like versus a rock or a tree, and then be able to autonomously identify them. Uh, you know, things like that that, that make it um, you know, just so much more capable than, than other aerial platforms out there today. So when I got to Utah, I got to fly the teal as George promised, but I was a little bit nervous to just totally open this thing up and hit that full 70 miles per hour. I've flown racing drones before uh, with the FPV goggles, and I'm decent, I guess, at best, because I usually um, hit a tree or a branch or just have some uh, crazy accident. So I was a little nervous to fly this thing around because he brought us to a field with like three different lakes. So there's no way I was putting that pre-production model into the lake, but I did give it a spin. I even brought my DJI Phantom 4 just to do a comparison so you can see uh, the difference between these two. So when it comes to speed and agility, the Phantom 4 really is no match for the Teal. It's really not supposed to be. The Phantom 4 is more for photography, videography, where the Teal is made for so much more. Exactly, we wanted this to be the we wanted this to be the one drone for your life. So instead of just being a flying camera, it, it, you know, it can do so much more than that and and suit a wide variety of people. So instead of you know, just, just one type of market. We're going after the consumer who's never flown before. They don't know about this technology. Uh, you know, they, they don't really know what's capable with this yet, but, but we want to make it as easy as, and as accessible as possible for them. So we have these beginner modes that, that let them, you know, start flying really easily and, and make it extremely safe. Uh, and then moving up all the way from the consumer to the hobbyist and the racer who want to push their technology further, uh, you know, push the boundaries of, of what they're doing currently, you know, race, uh, play games with it, and then developers who want to start building apps around this with their SDKs to start building out this, this critical mass of software and, and applications. So instead of just being a drone for, for one specific application, we can be a, a multi-use uh, aerial platform. So what's great about the Teal is that it has a really small footprint, and actually all the parts on this thing are what you would call plug and play. The arms literally just come off and this thing just breaks down so small you could put it in like the smallest handbag and just take it anywhere and fly anywhere. And on top of that, it's very durable too. So we're manufacturing here in the States. We're doing our PCB, our, our assembly and our packaging in, in the Rockies and then doing our plastic injection molding in Texas. And so we're using a carbon infused plastic, which is close to the strength to weight ratio of, of carbon fiber, uh, but it's plastic so we can mold it, streamline it, uh, make it aerodynamic, but it still has that durability where you, know, you can have a brick wall impact and, and you know, this won't break. But if it does, for whatever reason, then the arms are modular, you can plug them in and out, replace them really quickly, within a couple seconds really, and get back in the air. So you actually fly the Teal using your Android or Apple devices, and they do offer a upgrade for iPhones right now where uh, it's a gaming controller and it gives it the more of the analog feel, uh, which is really cool for sure. Um, but it's not just limited to that. Uh, it also works with other transmitters like the JR, Futaba, Spectrum, um, and more. So you're not limited to one certain way to fly this thing. So out of the box, we include two high-performance batteries that gets you up to 70 miles an hour, 40 mile an hour wind resistance, and those give about 10 minutes of flight time. And then we also include a, a free endurance package for those first 500 signature series uh, models that, that we're uh, offering. And, and that endurance package gets you up to about 20 minutes. 
Right, both batteries are for us. Uh, the high endurance battery is about double the capacity, slightly lower discharge rate, higher energy density, which, which gives you the, the longer flight time. And then the high performance battery is, is just a really high discharge rate, which is great for racing and, and uh, uh, you know, speed. We're looking at 1299 retail just under the Phantom 4. Um, and then, you know, as we scale to higher, higher inventories and see what the market demand is and, and uh, you know, get our costs down, then our, our goal is to keep lowering that. But manufacturing in the USA, you know, having a supercomputer integrated and an inertia navigation system, not taking any shortcuts on any components, you know, our, our costs are pretty high and, and we're, we're frankly not making much margin. But we wanted to get this out to as many people as possible, show them you know, how incredible a, a, a drone can be and, and how, how capable it can be, how easy it is to fly um, and, and make it as accessible as possible to, to as many people as possible. So that basically sums up my trip to Utah and my first experience with the Teal. So what do I think? I think the Teal is an amazing drone with tons of potential and possibilities. I really think once the app developers start developing these applications, uh, is when we're really going to see the real value um, of this drone. Now, right now, pre-orders are happening, so you can pre-order this guy. I'm going to put links in the description. I'm also going to put links in the description um, so you can read up more about uh, the company and about George. And also, there's a few other guys who uh, were down there with me that are going to be putting out uh, reviews too. So I'll go ahead and put their channels on there so you can check out their reviews. Uh, but just remember, this one was a pre-production model that I looked at. The real uh, production model will be that carbon-infused plastic. Um, and, you know, George is actually going to send me one of these. Uh, the first batch is going to be delivered before Christmas. So when I get it then, I just cannot wait to test out, like, everything I talked about in this video. Um, I'm going to make a whole nother video on it then, too, about me testing out everything I could possibly do. And I'm really looking forward to racing this guy, FPV. Um, I have some Fat Shark version 2 goggles I can just uh, hook up with this thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, that is the teal. I'll put a link in the description. And thanks for watching.